Hello and welcome to the vlog. For this vlog I am shamelessly stealing an idea that I've seen on many other people's vlogs. I suppose the first time I saw it was on a, a chap called Julian Eilet. He does these electronic reviews of things to do with Arduino microcontrollers and stuff. I don't understand a word of it but it is strangely compelling and what he does is he orders loads of stuff and then does a video about all the parcels he's received. So I've seen various other people do it as well. And I've ordered some stuff, so today is one of these shopping haul vlogs, a bit like the one I did a couple of vlogs ago with the torch and the mop. And I've, I've been and I've bought some stuff, so basically I'm just going to go through it and show you what I've bought. Let's start with the littlest item first. It's terrific receiving stuff in the post, I love it. Um, it is a bit of retail therapy. And this was prompted by a video, ooh, it was a couple of vlogs back, the problem when I had the um, gas leak. And various people suggested in the comments when I asked for suggestions as to how to deal with gas problems, people said you need to get yourself some of this, which is PTFE plumber's tape designed for gas. And as I understand it, you take this tape and it's self-adhesive tape, is it? I'm not even sure it is. But anyway, you, you wrap it round the thread of the gas pipe and then you put it, as you screw it in, it sort of helps form an extra tight seal between the gas pipe and the bottle. And in theory, that means you should have no more leaks. So next time I unplug the bottle, I'm not going to take them off now and put it back on with the tape because as far as I understand it now, they are secured and there is no gas coming out of them. But next time I swap a gas bottle, I've now got... How much is this? 15 metres? 12 metres? I think it's about 12 metres or something of this tape. For all common gases and liquids, it says. So, there, there we go. Gas quality PTFE. Apparently the colour is significant. If you buy the yellow stuff, I am told, don't hold me to this, but I'm told that the yellow stuff is the gas stuff. So that is PTFE tape to wrap around the thread of my gas bottle next time I change it. So that should make me gas safe, hopefully. Now, another parcel here, and this actually contains three items. I've had a sneaky peek inside already. And continuing with the gas theme, I've bought myself a flammable gas detector. Now, this is not a gas alarm. It doesn't sit in the bilge and permanently monitor for gas, and I'll come back to that in a second. What this is, is a sort of Harry Potter-style wand that you point at where you think there might be a gas leak and press a button and it will light up and say if it has detected gas. So again, thinking back to the example of the gas bottles in the gas locker, once I've put the new bottle on, complete with my PTFE tape, and opened the gas valve, I would then point this at the connection to the bottle and if there is any leak, it should light up. It's got three lights on it, red, yellow and green. I'm taking it the green is good, red is bad. I don't know what yellow is, but I'll read the instructions. Um, oh, it says on the back, high alarm is red, low alarm is yellow. But as far as I'm concerned, any alarm coming on is gas and that's bad. And it runs off a couple of little AA cells. And it says it de detects minute traces of gas, natural gas, butane, propane, LPG and LNG. And you can use it either around the gas bottle or, as someone here at the marina was telling me, you can use it around your gas cooker. If you think you may have a slight leak around your gas cooker, if some of the pipes perhaps to your cooker, you think, wait a minute, there's a whiff of gas here. You just point this at it and sort of go around the pipes and wherever it detects the gas, it will beep and light up and then, you know, there you've got the problem. So I'm slightly more gas safe than I was before. I'm still looking for a permanent gas alarm to mount somewhere in the bilges, but it seems you can't get ordinary battery powered versions of them. They have to be hardwired into your main boat batteries, presumably because they draw more current than you could sort of continuously supply from a battery. And that is going to be a bit of a problem because wiring one in properly means wiring. Um, and that sounds like a, a lot of a, a job, but they do exist. I don't know how much they cost. I'm going to find out and see whether it is feasible to put one, if not actually in the bowels of the boat in the bilge, then possibly next to the water tank, because that's the next section of the boat back from the gas locker. So any 
gas that was going to escape into the boat would have to come through down through the boat past the sides of the water tank and if I can put an alarm in there um, it should pick it up and also it should be relatively easy to wire one up in there so that's a that's a work in progress let us turn back to the hall and what do I have here this is something for a job that I'm absolutely dreading come the summer I don't want to do it now in winter this is gunk degreasant this stuff is legendary you sort of brush it on to your engine or anywhere that needs degreasing leave it for a bit and then you rinse it off with a hose it, apparently even on the engine you can do this if you wrap the electrical bits so they don't get covered in water and it is the degreaser and cleaner now i've bought the gunk green version because apparently it's environmentally friendly and since any mopping out or pumping out of the gunked engine i do will probably be back into the canal i thought it's best to buy the environmentally friendly version i'm not sure how environmentally friendly it is it says it contains natural ingredients and is biodegradable and is not classified as hazardous well i think that's about as good as you can get then for a degreasant that might be pumped back into the canal and when i say pumped i'm not tipping the whole degreasant back in but you know once you've put this onto the engine and rinsed it you're gonna to have to pump the water out somewhere and presumably that'll be back into the canal the job i'm not looking forward to doing is that there is a part of the engine bilge that is somewhat rusty now inevitably it's not the part I can get to. It's not the part that has the easy access deck board that comes out and you can just lean over and get into. It's actually not the bit underneath the engine where I've had that persistent oil and water leak. It's the part of the engine build that is to the left of the engine, underneath some pipes and underneath the battery bay. It's just going to be a complete nightmare to get to but that's the one that is slightly rusted in part and I need to hack all the loose rust off, then degrease the whole lot using the gunk with lots of water, hose it off, dry it out completely, then put some rust treatment on it for which I earlier bought this stuff, which is um, quite highly recommended on some of the forums, Furtan Rust Treatment. And putting this on sounds like a little bit of a, a faff. You sort of you don't brush it on, do you? Do you brush it on? I think you, there we go, by brush, roller, spray or sponge. And then weirdly, having put the snuff on, 24 hours later, you then mop it off with a, with a damp cloth or you can rinse it down again. A bit of a faff. But having done the rust treatment, then I can put some bilge paint down there. It's going to be a monumentally awkward job and I definitely want to do it in the summer when the weather is nice and I can devote some time to it but the combination I'm hoping of gunk both for the engine which is a bit oily and for the bottom of the bilge should hopefully they do the job so that the fur tan can get to work and then I can do some painting and I'll have a nice shiny bilge I've also got to do that at the bottom of the gas locker because it's all just bubbled up I'm told by the surveyor who originally examined the boat he said don't worry about it not a problem he said it looks terrible but it's really not you can just scrape it all off rust treat it and paint it it'll be fine I'm really hoping that that is true what else have I bought myself I have a new toy for the shower now a while back I did a video about putting a new shower hose on and I've bought another little bit for the shower this is a I'm just dropping the washer here it's a little on-off valve which simply goes in line to the shower hose and the reason I want that is that at the moment I've got taps on the shower hot and a cold which means that once I've got them to exactly the right temperature I don't want to adjust them but if you are doing what is called a navy shower where you turn the taps on get wet stop the water lather up and then turn the water on again to rinse and you're doing that so as to conserve water so you're not running it while you're lathering yourself up the problem is you've got two sets of turning the taps on and off again and trying to get the temperature right if however I get the temperature right and then turn the shower off using this thing which as you can see just has this little ah! valve which is clearly very slippery uh, and you can just turn the shower off lather up 
and then pop it back on again and it'll come straight back out again at the temperature that was preset. I'm hoping that will be a, a useful little addition. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I point this directly at the camera, but you can just about see the valve opening and closing in there. So I have yet to try that. We'll um, discover if that actually does what I want it to later. There is one final package in my shopping haul, and it is this. This is the Nicholson's Guide, as you can see, to the Grand Union Oxford and South East, taking you all the way down to London. Now, I have a selection of these guides already. In fact, I've already got the one for Birmingham and the heart of England, which is basically most of the Midlands. I've got the one for Seven, Avon and Birmingham. That takes you down towards Worcestershire and places like that. But this is a brand new version, literally published this month, February 2016, the latest edition of the Grand Union Oxford and South East. And I had that on pre-order with Amazon for about three months and suddenly it arrived. So there it is, brand new. And what this book contains is not only details of the canals, but it gives you details of where all the uh, pubs are, which is important, and where the um, emptying points are for your toilet cassette and where the water points are and places of interest. So you can see you get a guide to the canal and it shows you where the turning points are, where the winding holes are and all that kind of thing. There's lots of notes about any sort of navigational notes you need to know about lock restrictions and width restrictions and height restrictions and all that good stuff. And it shows you where all the locks are and things like that. So that I think is going to be useful because at some point I will head down the Grand Union towards London. I may not go into London, it's very crowded, but I've got friends in the north, hold on, let's get this right, northwest of London. Um, so I'll probably go down Rickman's Worthway at some point, and I thought it was worth having that book. Is that the end of my haul? I think it is. That's the end of the haul. What did I buy? One, two, three, four, five things, which will all, again, make my narrowboat life, hopefully, a little bit easier. Hope that was interesting, hope that was useful, just a little update as ever. If you've got any comments or questions about the, I don't know, the gas sensor or the gunk degreaser or whatever, please do leave them down below. As usual, I will try to answer them. And thank you very much for watching. Cheers now. Bye-bye. <laughs>